Happy Memorial Day, everyone out there listening to the Men's League Legend presented by Grove City Hockey. Today is May 31st, and a little story going back to uh, an earlier May 31st for this day in hockey, we have the infamous Atlanta Thrashers, originally the Atlanta Flames, coming back to Atlanta as the Thrashers, and uh, today was the last day they ever uh, spent in Atlanta. They would go up to Winnipeg, where they'd become the Winnipeg Jets, bringing hockey back up uh, to an even playing field up in the north. And uh, that happened today. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's get back. And uh, unfortunately, one of our uh, hosts, Sean Takachi, is not feeling the greatest tonight. So uh, we have a guest uh, tonight for uh, uh, Men's League me Legend, another Men's League Legend. Uh, the guy can't skate forward or backwards, uh, doesn't know how to shift change, but... You know, he, he looks good in his beer league uh, shirt. Welcome to the podcast, Tyler Domenico. All facts. <laughs> good introduction. So uh, let's get right into it, boys. We don't have uh, too much time here tonight, so let's uh, let's get everything out on the table. Um, as many people know, a lot of teams right now are getting kicked from the playoff structure, and uh, you're starting to look at summer hockey and next year. So, per the CBA agreements last year, um, it was agreed upon that the NHL will be participating in the Olympics. The question that we have is, the NHL just taking over a different market, or is Olympic hockey with NHL pros really the way that we want to go? Do we want to get back to the days of amateurs and non-professionals playing, or do we want to see Sidney Crosby, Connor McDavid, Nathan McKinnon on a team? Um, I'm kicking at the sky first because I know he's uh, really passionate about this. Uh, <clears throat> nothing wrong with the amateurs, but whenever you have all this talent in the NHL and them not letting them go play, like as you've seen in the past, it's just sort of the Olympics is like lackluster at that point. You want to see them get stacked as long as with Russia, the U.S., Sweden, you know, the whole the whole nine yards. You want to see them just go at it. Okay, okay, so it, are there more than four actually competitive teams then? I mean, you've got maybe five if you throw Finland in there. You've got U.S., Canada, Finland, Sweden, Russia. I mean, that's not much of a world sports tournament. I think it grows the market at that point, though. You have all these other teams like with better players like... I can't think of anything off the top of my head, to be honest. Look at Germany, though. Like, yeah, they've yeah. done better as of recently, so... Okay, okay, so my point is, why don't we celebrate Germany and make it amateurs only? Because once you bring professionals into it, it's just Russia, U.S., and Canada. Russia, U.S., and Canada. Well, Russia, Sweden, and Canada. Well, the, you're downgrading both, you know, let's compare U.S. and Germans. You're downgrading both of them to amateurs. But, have to but Germany, does, Germany doesn't have a professional league in it. So, so my point is, is that whenever you take NHL talent and you put it into a Olympics, the best of that country, it, it's going to be really stacked in three teams' favors, maybe four or five if you uh, count Finland and Sweden. And why don't we want to celebrate a Great Britain team and a Germany team and a Hungary team? You know, when you have those big three or big four or five in there, it really doesn't give those smaller markets an opportunity to compete in the Olympics where every country should be able to compete. Well, yeah, but the best players in the world for Germany are playing in the NHL, so they wouldn't be there. So they wouldn't be represented. I understand that, but there are more Germany players that are good at hockey that can't make the league because they're not that good. And then why aren't they in like, the AHL? AHL players are allowed to play in the Olympics. So here's my thought with this, though. <clears throat> if you think of, like, the NHL, the KHL, like, all the big leagues, like, you have each market that watches those leagues, right? Mm -hmm. The Olympics is something that the whole world sort of circles around. So wouldn't you want the best of the best out there, even though, like, yeah, you won't have Great Britain or Germany be able to compete at that level compared to Canada, U.S., but wouldn't you want to have the best players out there putting on the best performances for these other countries to watch but as I, a whole? I think that's what you see in the NHL. I think that's what the NHL is made for. I don't it? think so necessarily because you have all these people in the KHL who could come to the NHL and make an impact, but they don't want to because they don't want to leave Russia. We saw it. Oh, man. Coming in as a rookie and dominating. But, uh, so the, the hard part to me is that you're still going to overshadow the younger market and smaller market teams. I think 
So the game that comes to mind is Russia versus Tur Turkey about six or seven years ago. Do you know what the final score of that game was? I do not. 42 to nothing. Because Russia absolutely ran away with the game, didn't have any competition, and the whole seeding system was based on, based on score differential, so they had no incentive to slow down. See, now, now, what little Turkish boy is going to say, I want to be like him, who got his ass kicked 42 to nothing, and uh, not see somebody from Turkey actually make it to a seeded spot in the Olympics? But the thing with that, though, is, <coughs> yeah, they don't have NHLers still, but, like, you have the people from the KHL. That's why whenever they ran the Olympics, it was, what, I think it was Russia and Germany, and I think mm -hmm. Germany ended up coming on top, I want to say. Possibly. It could have been Russia. I could be wrong. I'm not too sure. But in the end, it's like, I think if you're trying to grow the market, you're going to want to showcase the best players, and w the Olympics is going to be the biggest thing, honestly. Let's get personal with this. We all play. So, if you're competing for championship, world title, whatever, do you want to play the best of the best, prove that you're the best of the best, or do you want to play like some what would be like ECHLers or whatever. I want to play the best of the best, honestly. I and, and I would ran over plenty of times playing hockey. And I, and I would argue that you play the best of the best if you play in the, in the show, not during the Olympics. Like, the Olympics is more about showcasing what your country is about and how your athletes perform. And to me... It, yeah, that's not having significant if you don't have Sidney Crosby on Team Canada. <laughs> what are you showcasing? Yeah, I think Connor McDavid player in the like world a getting word. You say the NHL is the best of the best, but it's him and Dreisaitl versus everybody else. So There's a reason they're not good. Where do you cut it off at, though? Or you have an AHL, or not AHLers, but like, is there like a, do you have to be 18 and over? Like, is Connor Bedard going to be able to go out there and play for Team Canada at this point? So that that's an interesting conversation. And now you're like almost forming the question into are the Olympics celebrated in the same fashion that World Juniors are? I necessarily And I would say not, no. It's not, yeah. The markets are two totally different. And things. so that's why I think you have to have players that aren't playing on NHL teams playing in the Olympics. I guess the easiest example is is what Olympic game stands out the most to everybody. Golden goal. It's Golden goal. I think so. I think so. That's the first you don't, game you I don't think that. miracle? Yeah. All time, yeah, miracle. Recent memory, golden goal. Okay, so the miracle on ice is one of the most talked about events because those were not the professional athletes in the country. Those were average American citizens, and you could argue that they're not that average, and I probably agree. But the point is, is that they're just, they're nobodies in the NHL. But they stand for their team, they stand for the USA, and that's what makes them so unbelievably good. And that's what makes a team like the USSR at the time so unbelievably important to beat, is because it's average, everyday people standing up, fighting for their country in the Olympics, and pulling off something that is absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, but that's like a once-in-a-lifetime deal. Yeah, but what, which one do you remember? Do you remember when... <laughs> when, when, um, so you're just gonna keep going for that like storybook ending for hundred sure, years in a why, row? Sure, why not? If you want to see, if you want to see the top, but rather than like actually bring like the reputation to your country, like you know, country. But if you want to see, if Olympics. you want to see the best hockey that anything can provide, it's the NHL. It's not the Olympics. Like the talk isn't whether the Olympics can generate better hockey. It's what is better for the sport. I think this conversation is never gonna end. Yeah, I feel like if you're growing the market, though, you got to go for the Olympic over the NHL because you're going to have more people watching the Olympics than the NHL because yeah. it's all around the world. Let's put it this way. Who are the top five best players in the NHL? No particular order. Probably McDavid. McKinnon, McDavid, Crosby. Matthews. One more. McKinnon, McDavid, Crosby. you got to throw Dreisaitl in there. With Matthews. The either Dreisaitl or... Uh, um, I'm kind of offended Ovechkin wasn't mentioned, but still, I, either way... I'm on the cusp of, like, Kucherov, Ovechkin, that's, and that's could be up dry right side. Yeah. So that's easily... The top ten players are coming from three countries. That's my point. Maybe maybe four if you throw in uh, dry Seidel, because, what, he's German. Yeah. So that's America, Canada, Russia. But they're all on different teams in the NHL. 
So to ha watch them all together, as a, from a fan's perspective, I would much rather watch that because it's so, literally so the, why, best, the best talent in the game so playing like, together and like showing how good they are. Like the so so why why make it an, why make it an Olympics and not like an All Star event? Because here's 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 the problem. I, I get that you're gonna say that the All Star events aren't like actually tried and they don't you know do their best, but my point here is is that if you don't allow amateurs to play. The smaller market teams are never going to have a chance to really showcase and actually win a gold. Amateurs you are allowed. They just don't make it. Yeah, they're just not good enough. Okay. Uh, so if you want to make it, you're harder. You're, you're you better. The gold is never going to leave U.S., Canada, Sweden, Finland, or Russia. Ever. And so, what's the point of any of those other small market teams playing if they're going to just play the best of the best that are playing in the NHL. Should the Olympics should be the Czech Republic have a team, or are they like dissolved they're, into Russia? They're honored as the best yeah, of their. They're honoring their nation. They're, they're representing their entire country. And so, there's a lot of players. Who so, so, so get to that. I would like, like to flip this on its head too, very quickly. Like, if you're a Turkish child and like you don't watch a whole lot of NHL games, and you see Sidney Crosby just like light it up, you could want to be like Sidney Crosby. Or Nathan McKinnon or McDavid. Yeah, you don't have to follow your own You don't country, have yeah. to be like, oh, he's not Turkish, so I don't care. It's like, wow, he's really good. Like, this is cool. Yeah, what, Mike Teddy Bluger. Who roots for Canada, honestly. What, Teddy Bluger Mike was basically Mike. followed in Crosby's steps going to, um, what college did he go to? Uh, he went to Shattuck St. Mary's for high school, right? Yeah, and then Bluger comes over from what? He's from Latvia? Yeah. Something like that. He goes to Shattuck, you know. Same route. Well, we're going to take a quick break here, and uh, when we come back, we're going to take our next topic, which is going to uh, dive a little bit deeper into amateur hockey, uh, getting towards the NCAA, what's been happening with uh, the past NCAA and uh, player contracts, and what's happening in the future with RMU Ice. So uh, when we get right back from this break, we'll, uh, we'll dive into that a little deeper with the boys. You're listening to Grove City Hockey. Yeah. Bonus Accounting is Western PA's premier accounting firm, offering payroll services, QuickBook advising, and business accounting, making them an accounting hat trick. Visit them today at bonusaccounting.com. Bonus Accounting, the firm of the future. Welcome back to Grove City Hockey, uh, Men's League Legends presented by Grove City Hockey. Um, we're going to dive into our next topic, which has to do about NCAA rules, regulations, um, what teams should be involved, what teams shouldn't be involved, and then we'll uh, start to talk a little bit about the RMU ice situation. So the first question presented um, for NCAA is the million dollar question that should any athlete that's playing in the NCAA be allowed to collect any sort of compensation, whether that's just endorsement deals on their name, uh, scholarship, you know, getting actually paid to play games. Um, so let, let's dive a little bit deeper into that and uh, what's everybody's thoughts on whether or not NCAA players should be allowed to be paid first? Yes. Think so? They should be. So what's the reason behind that? The college is using their <coughs> talents to make money so they should get some kind of kickback. I'm not saying a lot necessarily get some kind of benefit or kickback from that. Yeah, but what if they're getting a full ride scholarship that costs, you know, tens of thousands of dollars that for is, them to get their college degree? That My is God. part of it, but... How like, many D1 athletes get a degree? It, not too many, because they leave the school too early, but I feel like a decent amount you might go back. You still get that scholarship without getting and a degree. I think they still honor the scholarship if they do go back, I want to say. My thought of it, though, is okay, they have... You'll have brands that sponsor, like, I think Cole Caulfield, I think he's sponsored by Bauer, maybe, possibly. So, you know, he'll get free equipment, you know, the schools get sponsored, get free equipment, get a full ride. I don't think necessarily they should be paid. The one thing I do disagree with the NCAA, NCAA does is how if they've earned money playing hockey that they're not allowed to play in the NCAA. I believe that's how the rule goes. Yeah, yeah, so I have a little bit of experience with this. Um, whenever we would work with the Phantoms, they were a league lower than NCAA. We'd have to get to the point, um, and this might be a little bit of a uh, controversial, yeah, a little bit of a controversial uh, statement here, but we'd get to the point where we'd have to drop gift cards on the ground and the players, quote, find them um, in order to buy them, like, lunch 
for a day. We couldn't hand them anything. I think that's honestly ridiculous, like, because that's going to affect our eligibility, and it's just, it, like, why does it get to that point? Like, if they were able to make hockey in a different, or make money in a different league playing hockey, then why does it really matter? If you're at that time playing for that NCAA team, if they're not making money at that point, then that should be the, I don't know, the clear cut. So... I, I know that I've talked to uh, you guys about this, like, off-air sometimes, so I'm going to bring up this story, and if you've already heard it, just please bear with me for a second. Um, does anybody know who Travis Roy is? I do not. Travis Roy was a starting defenseman in uh, Boston U about seven or eight years ago, um, and he was coming back to retrieve the puck in his own end, and he got hit into the boards, neck first, paralyzed from the neck down, couldn't play let alone couldn't operate as a human. So my point is is that he went to a pretty prestigious hockey school, yeah. BU's really, really high up there in their pedigree and their alumni association, um, didn't get paid to play hockey, had a not only career and a like season-ending in injury, but he'll never be the same person ever again. So why should he take on that amount of risk and incur that kind of damage when he could go play for, you know, a European team or an Asian team or a Canadian team, actually get paid for what he does, and come away just as far as if he would have taken the NCAA route. You're voluntarily playing a game. You're playing a sport. Not only that, you know, back to the, you know, scholarships, you know, those are your full rides, you know, get enough money to be able to get, like, all their dorms and everything paid for what do college kids have to go through? They have to go through internships. So a lot of these athletes, they're not going to actually get a job for what their degree, even if they finish out. You know, a lot of them don't. This is basically their internship to go to the NFL, you know, NBA, NHL. So it's it's that experience that we all need to be able to get a well-paying job in the field. That's how you got to look at it. I see what you're saying. Because they are getting compensated for it, but they're also getting that experience. It doesn't feel like the dynamic there is really... Like, the college benefits way more off their likeness, especially if, like, you're a star, than, like, they get by risking their bodies. And I was going to say, I thought of this while you were talking. It's like playing a sport and it's optional. If you if you look at, like, let's say, I don't... Most... It, it, I guess it would typically happen more in, like, the NFL... Like, you don't know what, like, their family is going through either. So, usually a lot of the time they're below the poverty line. Like, they're really struggling. So, they should get some kind of kickback for that, too, in my opinion. I mean, maybe not directly to the, the athlete, if you don't want to do it that way. But, like, if their family's still struggling. Like, if, like you said, like, if they become paralyzed in some freak accidents, like, oh, like, what are we going to do? Like, they're completely screwed. So, you know, I think it... The, the colleges benefit way more than the athletes in that relationship. I think it should be a little more even. So, oh, sorry, Scott, go ahead. See, the sad thing, though, is that's never going to change. And I know we're a hockey podcast, and hockey, when it comes to NCAA, is definitely the lower market. But if you look at, like, the NCAA for, like, uh, college football, like, you look at the stadiums for, like, say, Florida and Gainesville, you have Bama and all of them, like, it is crazy. They're bigger than NFL stadiums selling out all, you know, all these uh, tickets, all this merch. You have people who are, you know, diehard fans, and it sucks that they don't get paid, but, like, it's hard to sort of, I don't know, agree with them getting paid, but I do like the viewpoint that you have, like, you know, if some of these players are coming from, like, a, a bad background to, like, compensate the families a little bit to get them there. But it, it, this is just this is a really touchy subject, honestly. So as much as I would hard. love to see us all come to an agreement, it seems like we have a pretty pretty split room. So to go based off what Tyler said in terms of like, you know, if you get hurt, you know, then what do you do? Left out in the water. I would go as far as saying them not getting you know monetarily compensated, but like maybe add some benefits and stuff like that, like where you get like you know health expenses taken care of. You know, if you get hurt. You know, you basically kind of get, like, an insurance for doing so. So so let's start at the very bottom, and we'll start to work our way towards athletes getting paid. And we'll see where we, we stop it, essentially. So starting at the very bottom, if you sign at BU, should you get 
a free jersey? Or should you have to pay for your jersey? I'd say free jersey. Free jersey. Okay. So, after the free jersey, do you get free sticks, gloves, helmets, all that? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, right there. If you are a eligible NCAA athlete, you have to pay for all of your ex uh, what, what, consumables, is what they call them. Your sticks, your gloves, your hockey tape, your helmet, your mouth guards. You have to pay for that out of pocket. So, we think that that's something that needs fixed right now. All right? Yes. Should you pay for your ring time? No. Okay. Should you pay for your travel to and from events? No. Okay. Should your family, your friends, get free tickets to the game? Eh. Debatable. Uh, yes. Um, well, yeah, debate, yes to being debatable. I wouldn't say, like, season tickets or anything, but maybe so, get a so game what, or something. So a game a season? Well, it, if it's home or away, if it's a home game, yeah, you should probably give them, like I said, say, like, ten tickets per player or something along those lines. If it's an away game, maybe give them it's awesome, like three. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, next up the line. Should they be able to make money previous to NCAA experience? Yeah, yes. I don't see why not. Should they be able to make money off just their namesake? Yes. Yeah. Should they be able to make money off of their namesake and a royalty for ticket sales to go to their events and jerseys that are sold by the school and bobbleheads and print media and stuff like that? Getting getting complicated, yeah. but I would generally say yes. Yeah. It would depend. So why the hell aren't we paying these players? I mean, we walked all the way up to right before paying them. See, I think that's the funny thing, though. If you think about it, you have all these kids that go to junior hockey. If you and they're getting paid to play junior hockey, like I'm not saying it's a lot of money, but if you have all these NCAA teams like saucing them some sort of money, that you might get a bigger market coming out of there than junior hockey. Okay. So th that seems pretty straightforward. Um, I think one of the hardest things, like y you did mention here, Sky, is that it's so much bigger than just a hockey uh, conversation. I mean, when you talk about football and the being that those players take on, you talk about basketball and being able to go. Um, Damon, you might have to correct me on this because you're the resident basketball dude. Um, you are able to go straight from high school to the NBA, right? You don't even have to. Not go. anymore. No, you used to be able to. The last one who did that was LeBron. And uh, they changed that rule, so you have to do a one and done year <coughs> in the col in so, college, or you can play professional overseas and then come over. But you either have to go to college, go to go play professionally in overseas, or go to like the G League, which the overseas or the G League you can get paid. It's just not as much. And I mean, honestly, like schools like Alabama and North Carolina, they're paying their players more under the table than they would make at the the paying positions anyway. Mm -hmm. so. I would love to see the methods they do to pay their players, honestly. Because you already I've, know what's going on, as Jake stated with like the gift cards, and that's just for like a very small team mm -hmm. compared to you know, all these kids at Bama and stuff like that. There was an article or something that came out recently, like within the last few months, that was something along the lines of they were, quote, getting students McDonald's, end quote. But they were just McDonald's bags full of cash. I heard about that. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, I, I just, understood that reference. I, wish I got in between like two of those cars. Okay, <laughs> 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 like, hey, I'll pay for the person behind me, and they're like, but I'll, I'll take their food as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were just getting giving them bags full of cash. Tua Tonga Vailoa, uh, quarterback for the Dolphins, was when in Alabama. Alabama yeah. paid for his whole family to move from Hawaii to Alabama. Like, his whole family. Yeah, you know they, they're not just chilling in Hawaii, and they're like, you know what we want to do? Move to Tuscaloosa. Yeah. We want to move to Alabama. <laughs> Tuscaloosa is not for this time of year. <laughs> well, we're going to take a quick break here, and uh, when we come back, we're going to uh, enter our final topic, which is, uh, once again, just revisiting how the Stanley Cups are going, and uh, we're going to start to talk a little bit about RMU hockey as well. Uh, when you return on Men's League Legends, you'll be hearing those topics. You're listening to Men's League Legends on Grove City Hockey. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Grove City Hockey. It may not be reproduced, retransmitted in any form without the expressed written consent of Grove City Hockey, LLC. We thank you for your understanding and hope to continue to enjoy this complimentary broadcast. To purchase footage, email LLC at gmail.com. Welcome back to Men's League Legend presented by Grove City Hockey. Uh, we 
mentioned at the beginning of the show that uh, we have a special guest today, and that would be Tyler Domenico. Tyler is a uh, assistant coach at Grove City Hockey, helps coach our youth team and uh, get the pipeline going so that we uh, have a strong um, and promising inline program in uh, Grove City. So, Tyler, we're going to send you to an exclusive event called Penguins Fan React, and uh, we just want to hear, you know, unfortunately our uh, Pittsburgh Penguins did not make it on to round two, but... Uh, we want to hear what the Penguins fans think of the game. Tuggy! Um, I, I really hate Tristan Jari. Like, I gotta <laughs> just, I gotta air this out. And I air it out all the time. And if you know me at all, like, follow me on Twitter, you know I hate Tristan Jari. <laughs> and if you if you've really? talked to me more than two times, you know, as of this moment in time, I really hate Tristan Jari. Like, Public enemy number one? I, I would go as far as saying if I saw him in, like, traffic... I would have to say something to him. Like, you <laughs> so bad. Like, I hate you. Like, your face makes me angry. Okay, so so let's start to go down that rabbit hole. So, exactly what do you dislike about uh, Tristan Jari? Because uh, hate's a strong word, Tyler. Tristan Jari, more like Tristan sorry. Oh! oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, it's the fact that the Penguins had a very good team this year. A ver- You have one... After this, you have one real shot with this core left, I would say, with, with Crosby, Malkin, and Latang, And Jeff they had, Carter. And, and that, Jeff Carter, one more year of Jeff Carter. And they, I mean, they had all the pieces like Jeff Carter. They found Jeff Carter. He was, a, he was an amazing pickup for nothing. Like Kapanen, Zucker. Oh it, it's it's, more year it's really there. bold of you to think that uh, Gino is going to be back next year. Just saying. Why? He has one more year on his contract. Yeah, yep. So get something for him while you can. No movement clause. He'll be picking where he wants to go. Please stop, Don. <laughs> <laughs> you are the environment that you're growing up in. Um, so y- you, it's really easy to be hard on a goalie like Tristan Jari. So given the trade deadline options that we had this year, who would you have taken to replace or help him get through this first round? The trade deadline is tough because I don't know who you could have gotten at the trade deadline. I don't know what was really available, if anything, that would have been like comparable or like worthy of getting. But I was always a big advocate. I'm not just saying this because 2020 vision, hindsight. I really thought they needed like a veteran presence at the start of the year when Rutherford was still here. I thought that would have been very good for him. And I think that would, like, even now, that would have been a very, very good pickup for, like, cheap. I always said Jake Allen. Like, before Montreal got him, I was like, that'd be pretty good, or something along the lines of someone. It doesn't have to be amazing. Someone super cheap. Someone who's like, okay, I need a little bit of a bounce back. Uh, let me try and mentor somebody. And, uh, you know, go somewhere where I can win. You mean, like, Anthony Niemi? <laughs> 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 um... In theory, yes. But in execution, no. The Blackhawks would like a word. <laughs> <laughs> who was like it that went to Philly to back on Carter Hurt? Brian Elliott. Brian Elliott, yeah. Kind of like that situation where... That would be, on yeah. paper, they have a good team. They should have done a lot better this year, but he goes there, like Carter Hart, he figures he's going to get the majority he's of the games. He's going to bounce back here, though. I'll guarantee that. So, the so, whole team needs a bounce back here. It's oh, not just him. Yeah, dude. Philly was such a... Well, I don't want to talk don't about Don't want to go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Tyler, you mentioned that y- y- you're having some... Uh, what's the word we want to use? Some discrepancies on the playing style of a certain uh, Tristan Jari. So, let's talk about some of the other team. Um, one of the biggest criticisms, other than the goaltending, was the defense in front of the goaltending. How do you think the boys did this year? What would you have changed? Would you have made any different acquisitions, different signings? Uh, how would you have changed the end from the D-line? Uh, you know, I don't really think the defense, and you can argue with me if you want, I'm open to uh, any opposition in this, but I thought the defense was, like, really good. I, I thought it was, like, one of the best defensive efforts we've gotten in the past, you know, since the Stanley Cup year. Let's go that, I mean, that far, like, 2017. I think everyone played their role perfectly well. Like, I thought Matheson was going to be bad. Matheson wasn't bad at all. No, like, I, I liked He actually it. did pretty well. He was one of my favorites. Cody Cece was pretty Cody good, Cece's too. been, like, amazing. He, could, he priced himself out. He's not coming back. He's going to go get a contract. I'm going to uh, pretend to be a yeah. beep, uh, beat writer from the Penguins Chronicles and say, well, Tang sucks. <laughs> so, so you're talking a lot about the offensive skill of these guys, and while I agree that a lot of them have been producing recently, there was entirely too much traffic and too many opportunities from 
like right in the middle of the rink where our D isn't pushing people out to the wall, up to the high slots, or down to the corner. And so that's where I think my discrepancy is with all of this, is the Penguins were actually a producing team this year, which is a little bit rare. They're, they've in past been a lot more defensively minded. Um, and I guess where I'm going with this is, can a team win with offense alone and not having those strong and in-front defense? I mean, the most aggressive player this year on our team was Brandon Tanev, and when you see some of these other defensemen on other teams being able to absolutely body players out of the way and be difference makers on the team, I just didn't see that on the Penguins this year, and that was re- was really frustrating for me. Call me old school, but I, I, I've, been sa- I've, I've been saying that for years. Once Ian Cole left... Penguins defense was shot. Ian Cole was, he was sacrificing the body to block shots. He was hitting anybody who came anywhere near him, and he was destroying them. He was one of my favorite defensemen the Penguins have had in a long time. And yeah, he didn't really produce offensively, but he was he was a defensive defenseman. He wasn't going to get beat. He was solid on the D end, and he was bodying anybody who came near him. I, I Him and uh, Trevor Daly is who I would think. I, I want to say... I was going to say a forward. The, oh. uh, what was his name? That uh, I think he was German, went Kunakle. to the Islanders. Kunakle. Yeah. I loved the two of them on the same team. They were, they were the same player, but one was a defenseman and one was a forward. And yeah, I, I couldn't I agree more on that. Both. I would say that's that would be my one criticism. That's, that's very... I think they wanted Pedersen to be that, and Pedersen's not no. that. No. <laughs> And, they need a beefcake. Uh, they need, like, Alexiak. Like, I like Alexiak oh, a yeah. lot. Big rig, baby. Um, I'm a big fan of him. I was mad uh, when they got rid of him. Big rig's I No, I'm going Jamie Alexiak. I have to, just because of the penguin bias. But Jamie Alexiak's bigger. How can you be big rig and not be bigger than the other big rig? <laughs> Dude, my money, if you put those medium two... Medium rig at best. If you put those two in the octagon... If you put those two in the octagon, I'm taking my money on Pat Maroon. Really? Yes. For sure. Alexiak's going full spider on him. He's going full spider. Yeah, that's UFC. I'm, he's, I'm got taking, Alex, ta- he's got longer arms. That's what I'm saying. I'm taking Alexiak by submission. <laughs> 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 that that sparks an interesting topic. So, <laughs> oh boy. most hockey fights, unless the refs are blind, are called as soon as somebody is dragged down to the ice. What if you had to put two... NHL players in an octagon where it was normal UFC rules, you know, no, as soon as you touch the ground, you're out, no, like, hit to the head, and you're out, like, a full-blown, either to a technical knockout or a submission or, you know, judge a wardle, who are our two nominees, and then once we decide our nominees, we're all going to vote on who we think takes the cake. Ryan. So, Ryan. 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 Okay, yeah, okay, so, so, so Tom Wilson. Wilson. Gotta be, yeah. You think Wilson would be it, though? Heavyweight, so, so you, I, don't you, think, I don't think US Wilson would take, the, would, like, would take the fight because he clearly hasn't in the NHL where he's not going to get punched when he's on Matt the ground. Matt Martin probably would. So, so UFC, not just boxing, where somebody who is small and agile and you know, quick might be able to beat somebody that's just a heavy hitter. But yeah, but that's a there's still weight classes. Like you're going to talk about weight classes. Yeah, there's still weight like classes. There's a reason people don't this. fight two classes up. That kid from Boston, what's his name? Frederick. Yeah. Frederick looks like an animal. So yeah, uh, I probably mean an animal. He looks like a perfect yeah. fit for Boston. <laughs> oh, that's for sure. He's I, a goon. I, yeah, I'd yeah that's him. it. He's just a goon. Yeah, I'd probably take him over at Wilson, honestly. Okay, so we've agreed that Ryan Reeves is one. So who's uh who's Ryan Reeves, uh I guess going after? He he's beating the sh- beating the stuffing out of anyone who comes <laughs> yeah, in. The he's beating the stuffing out of anyone who enters the octagon. Of all time or just now? All time. You throw Matt Domi in there? Uh, he's not going all time. He's I've never heard of Matt Domi, but I don't know. You throw Chara in there. You're thinking of Ty Domi. Chara also yeah, is not you. a fighter, so Matt Domi. Max Domi. Is yeah, but son. he's stupid strong. I don't know where Matt. No, who, who am I just saying? He's long. He's just long. You guys compare me to him all the time. He's that effort can do 50 pull ups with that body weight. Players huh? that you can pick from. I mean, that yeah, move on like rolls. Like Probert. Like okay. That, like. Here, here's the other thing. Cool. Does That's does a goalie make it into that lineup? Because they're not in goalie gear anymore. Rod Hextall. Strap him up, baby. Let's go. You don't want to um, put Robin Leonard in there? I think Hextall. Would no, Patrick Wall. Like Ray Emery. Oh. Like. Animal. I'm not a fan of Patrick Wall. I'm sorry. Oh, the cliche, big, well known. Okay, so you got two two of all time. Sky, who's your two of all time? You have to take Ryan Reeves without a doubt. Okay, that's one. Who's your second? 
You know, I'm taking Ty Domi. I Ty think Domi. Domi. I think Domi would actually beat Ryan Reed. It's not going to lie. Wow. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, uh, Ty. I, would, I, too, would say Ty Ooh. Domi, but I'm getting some whispers from the audience. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't see what he said. He just said it three times now. Mike, there's a reason you don't have a mic. <laughs> so we that, have that also. We have, the, 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 <laughs> wait. That's okay. There's a reason Mike doesn't have a mic. It's because no one wants to hear what he has to say. <laughs> oh God. All right. Now I didn't get a chance to say my hot take because Mike stole it. Can so. we? Is it? Was it George Laura? Yes. I was going to say that. Hold on, absolutely hold on. wonderful. I'm not going to take it from. I have to think. Okay. Of we're we're gonna. Uh, to be contrarian, uh, I I really want to pick Ty Domi and. Uh, Ryan Reeves, but uh, we have a, a hot take that was more or less revealed here. I have to go George the Rock. I have to. I have to. That was a that was a good statement by the person who made it. Uh, we're not happy that they said it because some, it was someone's ace in the hole. But um, he, yeah, that clip of him being like super nice before a fight and just like being so plain, being like, "Yeah, good luck." I've actually and met him beating, before. He's nice as hell. Really? Yeah. He wanted to. He wanted to fight. Um. Did you see the tweet where he wanted to fight? Um. Jake Paul. Jake Paul. Jake Paul. Oh, I would. I would have my entire savings on George. I would love to see that. He wanted to fight Tom Wilson too. He told uh, the Rangers. Yes, yeah, I mean for a day. Yes, I mean do a one day contract. I'll go fight him. <laughs> I got a hot take. Let's hear it. Go ahead, you got your two. I have so, someone at Mono. I'll see if you say it. And we're gonna go down a weight class or two. So we're gonna go Carcillo. Okay. And, uh, what is it? Is it Grattan or McGrath? Oh, uh... The play for Wilkes-Barre. Uh, McGrath. Grat- Grattan plays for the Islanders now. He's a different... Is it like, yeah, McGrath or whatever? Like, Buddy eats it? He Good gives it. He gives it, though. Priscilla's a goon, too. Oh, Priscilla would just stand there and eat punches and still throw him? Oh, 100%. <laughs> Alright, Damon, who's your, who's your two, uh... Two ring leaders. See, I, I was gonna say I was gonna say Reeves and Larock, but I gotta think of someone spice here. Um, I'm gonna do it in the in the sense that we're trying to sell pay per views. So oh, take a different spin on I it. like this. We're trying to sell pay per views. Who who sells more <laughs> more pay per views than the the pest the rat himself Brad Marshall oh, <laughs> Brad Marshall is stepping in the ring he he's answering the bell and the thing I got came whenever I said I want Mike Mulberry as my analyst whenever we're doing the replacements because I want shoes thrown but I'm trying to I'm trying to sell tickets I'm trying to sell people you got people getting their I'm trying to sell like, it's way worse yeah that's not pay per view so you can only see that if you buy the pay per view I'm trying to sell the pay per views beforehand it's Brad Marshall and he's gonna be a, a complete circus the whole time all right who's going against the rat ooh. <laughs> I almost want to say like the little Russian dude that two fight each other uh, no uh, <laughs> it's like you ever see the little, the little meme whenever he has his hand on there and he's <laughs> I uh I'll say a, a, a fan favorite in the Pittsburgh area who was also unanimously despised Matt Cook Matt Cook and the rat himself, Brad Marchand. I have an honorary mention whenever, uh... I have a completely 180 take from all of you guys. Okay, let's see. This is, again, uh, going off of how do you sell pay-per-views. Not necessarily who's going to land the hardest hit, who's going to be, you know, the most uh, goonish player out there. So, the reason I know I win is because... It's already sold pay-per-views. It's already sold an unbelievable amount. Cassian and Tuchuk. I mean, that's the best answer you can have. They have shirts going out there. They had specific set aside. Boo. <laughs> boo, Jake, boo. You know, you know what would be a fun twist? If uh, he actually beat Cassian, but then Dowdy came out of the crowd. <laughs> it's, it's a tag team now. It's, it's Cassian yeah. and Dowdy versus the Tuchuk. No, he comes out with the Raptors or something like that. The brothers Kachuk. <laughs> Scott to a celebrity ref, Kachuk's father. <laughs> so, the one player, one player I was thinking when came to my mind going around the horn. What about Aaron Asham? Ooh, he, I mean, he has a one fight against Jay Beagle where he one punch pieced him. What else is like? What other fights does he do? Throw hands. Yeah. I'm not right. saying he couldn't scrap, but like, do do we think Brendan Gallagher has a history? Do we think he's uh, aggressive enough that he'd be a good fight? Brent Johnson, 
Rick DiPietro, round two. <laughs> <laughs> See if he can break his jaw and his knee again. <laughs> I'm in. Um, I do not think so. To answer your question, this time he might be a, he might be a monster <laughs> in the ring, but I don't think he can be like like straight up fighting now. Well. We're going to take a quick break here, and when we come back, we're going to get to our uh, final episode of, or segment of the show, uh, Bet to Build. Um, when you come back, you're listening to Men's League Legend, presented by Grove City Hockey. Pittsburgh Area Chimney Sweep proudly services the greater Pittsburgh area with over 10 years of experience. We want to keep you warm this holiday season. We not only want to keep your chimneys safe and clean, but also looking beautiful inside and out. We are fully licensed, insured, but more importantly, we are friendly, honest, and local. Call us today to schedule a quote at 412-206-6305. Pittsburgh Area Chimney Sweep proudly sponsors Grove City Hockey. Welcome back. You're listening to Men's League Legend presented by Grove City Hockey. Uh, it's time for our favorite segment, which is Bet to Build. Uh, once again, Grove City Hockey is all about growing the sport of inline hockey. And uh, the more uh, opportunities we have to play, the more uh, players we can get involved. So we are uh, betting on NHL playoffs right now so that we can uh, you know, build our own rink and uh, start making more and more programs. So before uh, you all make uh, fun of me here, I'm just going to uh, get right out there and uh, you know, take on the train head on right now. Um, I uh, I was in I was in the lead last week. I had a ton of money in the account, and uh, it's weird you're not wearing the hat. Y- y- my uh, my cocky <laughs> decided to go all in, and uh, well, um, thanks to uh, Tyler's favorite player Tristan Jari, I uh, escaped with absolutely nothing. So thanks, Tristan. Big big thanks loss for uh, for everyone for for my uh, point of view. But uh, let's go into. Uh, you know, Damon, what did you have this weekend? So I started the weekend with zero dollars and zero cents. So I had nowhere to go but up. <laughs> I didn't go up. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so I, I, I used a free bet. I had a free $5 bet. And I, I placed a three-leg parlay. I want to do Can a little... Can I you out? <laughs> <laughs> I took a loan in order to bet this week. And, uh, <laughs> Put a mortgage on his apartment. This turned into a, a Comedy Central roast of me, apparently. <laughs> uh, but... So I had I, I had a three leg parlay. I'll tell you what the what the legs were. I want to see if anyone can guess close to the to the odds. So it was Evgeny Malkin to have a point, uh, Nikita Kucherov to have a point, and Mark Stone to have a point. I feel like it's only like a plus seven hundred ish. I'm gonna guess thirteen hundred. Plus four? No, plus five fifty. I'm saying like closer to like six. Wow, you guys are. I would have never guessed that high. It was plus 5'10". Five, 5'10". Five, yeah. Then he said Kucherov. That's what I knew. Like, he's averaging like two points. Up. Yeah, so it, it should have been pretty low. Like, the odds should have been... Like, the plus money especially should have been a lot lower, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, Malkin had a point. Good for him. Kucherov had a point. Mark Stone just loves to screw me. He had the best odds. The best odds. Minus 190. Wow. Yeah, Kucherov was a plus 140. What? what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I saw that. That's because it's not just half a point. Like, you had to get oh, one and a half with him. Oh, you're right. You're right. Sorry. Yeah, that's why a, I, was, I noticed the same exact thing. It was one and a half. Batting on McDavid, it's yeah. always at a point for an over-under. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but Kucherov had his one and a half. Mark Stone couldn't get one point. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was the night that... Uh, the, didn't the Wild shut out the Golden Knights yeah, at some like point? Nothing, I think, I think that... Yeah, I think that was the night. So I uh, I went from zero dollars and zero cents after a long weekend. Uh, I'm still at zero dollars and zero cents, and I I gotta switch something up. I gotta figure out something. I know I know there's gonna be some free bets opening up here at some point, but I gotta I have, I, I, I gotta find another uh, another strategy. This just isn't working. So uh, Mr. Skyler, wh- how'd you do this week? Uh, I made <laughs> since I. Uh, Mr. Jake was very kind to call me during the Penguins game on Wednesday to remind me about betting. I only had one game to bet on. <laughs> and that was uh, Minnesota and Vegas. Uh, 
I made a bunch of player prop bets. I wasn't feeling the money line over under. I think I, I don't have my phone in front of me, but thinking I bet on Kaprasov. Ah, uh, jeez. Capri Sun. Yes, that guy. Yeah, Capri Sun. I think I, I think I threw money on Stone too, and uh, you must have lost. Eck. And then what actually made me hit was I put a dollar on Kevin Fiala to score, which he did. So my dollar turned into three dollars and some odd cents. Ooh, and, I, I'll take it. You know, tripled, and I still more, have, more than tripled his money. I have thirteen in my account because there was some ten dollar bonus play MGM was very kind to give me, and uh, we'll pass it off to Flannery, who is just looking very happy over there. An Irish wake. I only had one dollar. Oh. And I turned it to three. Hey! <laughs> 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 All right, so I didn't do shabby. I did three bets. Um, we're going to start by giving out the veggies first, taking a look at the losses. So we took the under in the uh, Panthers uh, lightning game, set at three and a half, ended up being a four goal game. <laughs> and then so shabby, too. <laughs> and then since I was pulling for the Panthers to go to the cup finals against Colorado, I went. Uh, so, yeah. A boosted parlay with the Panthers and the over. So, took a little bit, you know, went both sides of the fence, under, over. Obviously, the score rate between Panthers didn't even win, so both null and void. But, thankfully, I've learned my lesson about betting for the Pens in the playoffs, and I took the Islanders to win, and the over 6.5 turned $5.25 there. Oh! Quad quintuple the money! So uh, we'll, we'll take a quick <laughs> we'll take a quick look at the uh, well, we need logo to here, but uh, it it really uh, uh, Sean uh, Sean won nine dollars and fifty five cents on a uh, player prop bet. Hey. Um, he'll have to uh, catch up next week, but uh, nonetheless, give me my hat. It, it, it we'll, we'll look oh, at the so aggressive. We'll, we'll look at the diagram out. here, and uh, it, it absolutely Christ. absolutely pains me to do this, but. Uh, Flannery, you, you won fair and square. You, you got the half of the week. Shall give it. Flan, you got a, a, a quick 30 second winner circle. What do you got? Suck it, losers. Move on. Suck it, losers 2.0. It, that is a uh, throwback to the first suck it, losers, he said, uh, <laughs> the inaugural episode of this uh, podcast. Um, now, the, uh, the, the well, dangerous awesome part for me. me so. <laughs> <laughs> the, the dangerous part for me. Uh, I am broke. I'm out of money. Um, do we offer the same deal that we offered Skyler, or is there a new rule on how I can get back in? As long as you are as as using LeBeta wheels. <laughs> Ooh. So I, I did get scratch-offs. Do we want to do the scratch-offs first and then do the goalie uh, challenge second? Sure. Nah, we want to go goalie challenge first. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start off here. I feel here. like if you hit like enough on the scratch-offs, then we don't get to do the goalie challenge, and I kind of just want to do the goalie challenge regardless. Yeah, last time you did a goalie challenge, you didn't score. Wow. <laughs> that was on you, now we're talking about Jake, so like, I'm going to go 4-4. Four four. Yeah, and, uh, I'm going to go Wendy's. Hey, you know, uh, you know who didn't get stopped during the first goalie challenge? This guy. <laughs> yeah, this so guy. Are gonna get reversed. You know who cries I'm about it every night? Wrong. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying moves I've never done before. I felt so good. I was confident. I had nothing to lose. I Why? Just like so, uh, what I so we heard from uh, Flannery. Uh, next week, make sure you watch the uh, bonus clip of uh, the goalie shootout video uh, to get Jake back into uh, Bet for the Build. So, uh... We're going to conclude here uh, real quick. I uh, want to thank the guys for uh, ju jumping on here. Uh, Damon Pajak, Matt Flannery, Skylar Hetrick, and, uh, of course, our special guest, Tyler Domenico. Uh, when we come back next week, uh, we'll have another exciting video. And, even more importantly, it'll be on to conference finals, boys. Playoff hockey is here. It's alive. It's well. And uh, we're getting ready to enjoy it. You're listening to Men's League, Men's League Legends presented by Grove City Hockey.